So, what do you do when? So, here we assume that we knew the population standard deviation, right. So, what if you do not know the population standard deviation? Sorry? You go for the t test. No, you can still do the z test. You try to estimate the sample standard deviation. Okay, you can estimate the sample standard deviation instead of knowing the true population standard deviation. Assume that the sample standard deviation is correct, right? And then go ahead and do the z test itself. Okay, so that's essentially what you do. But what do you do even the mean is unknown? Can you say something useful if I do not know anything about the mean of the old uh, systems? Is that, is that even a question that you can ask, right? You can. So, you can just say that, hey, I am going to hypothesize that the running time on this new problem should be 2 standard units, right, and it is 2.8. So, can I say that the new problems are? things that will with confidence I can, can I say that they will take more than 2 standard units to compute right. I can make an assumption about what the mean should be of what I think is the baseline case and then I can compare against the assumed mean right. right? So, you can still use the z test right we do not be in a hurry to abandon the, uh, the z test because it is still uh, useful right. So, you do the t test Right, any, any questions about this? I mean, so if you do not have the standard deviation, just run some sample standard deviation test uh, estimates and then Why use it. Why yeah. stick to one measurement of x bar mean? We could do more, right? You could. That would give us better results. You could. I mean, you could do that. So, essentially, what would you have to do in that case is, okay, what is the probability that these 10 different measurements I made gives me, uh, I mean I would have generated all these 10 measurements from this right, then I, my sampling distribution becomes slightly different. So, I have a set of 10 samples that I have drawn right and what is the probability that these 10 samples will turn up exactly this fashion. Can you imagine how horrendous that sampling distribution will be right. So, if you can, if you have an easy way of computing that sampling distribution, which you could, right, you can, because with all these simulation based ideas, you can set up arbitrarily complex sampling distribution. The reason we have to stick to a simple, a simple trans, uh, sampling distribution because that is what central limit theorem gives us, right. So, if you, if you are happy to do this in a simulation, uh, you can set up a sampling distribution using simulation. Assuming you have access to ways of generating uh, many, many samples from the underlying data. Right. So, if you are just doing it bootstrap, then uh, you run into problems, right, because the sampling is no longer independent. There, I mean, you, drew, you drew some large n samples, and you are repeatedly sampling from that. So, the sampling is no longer independent, and you will have to adjust for that, right. But if you truly have a way of sampling from the underlying data, right, you can set up the sampling distribution you wanted, right. So, people understood his question. His question was, why did I have only one x bar nu, right? Why cannot I sample x bar nu on multiple? Uh, samples. So, why cannot I just compute this on multiple samples and figure out, right. So, the answer is yes you can, but what you have to do is you will have to find out suppose you do this 10 times, right. Now, I will have 10 numbers, you will have to find out what is the probability that I could have drawn all of these 10 numbers under the old uh, under the null hypothesis, right. So, if I can find that out, okay. Now, I will need a different quote unquote sampling distribution for this right. So, if I have if I have a way of constructing that sampling distribution, then I can run the test and one way of constructing that sample sampling distribution is through simulations. Just keep drawing many many samples sets of sets of 10 samples right and then and then look at the distribution of those and then try to form a distrib uh, form your uh, estimates from that right. What's that? In that case, in the example, if we do not have sigma e is equal to 0.948. Yeah, that is what I said, right. So, you have to actually draw samples from whatever samples that you have, right. Estimate the sample variance, right. So, in fact, if I do this, right, if I have this x, x bar is 2.8, okay, I can estimate the sample variance of that also, 
right and assume that that variance is the variance of the population. So, instead of using sigma here, I will use the sample variance here right and divide by root n and use that as my uh, denominator in the uh, uh, z statistic ok. Huh. Okay, this is something which I forgot to mention sorry about that uh, in all of the things that I am talking about today right the assumption is that the means are different right I am testing for the difference in means but I am assuming that the standard deviation is the same across the new and the old right that is why I can estimate the standard deviation on the new data and I can still use it as the population standard deviation right and uh, we are assuming only that the means are different right. So, there are uh, the whole class of uh, statistical tests uh, that you can run if you assume that variances also are significantly different and you want to estimate the variance right and uh, this uh, broadly fall under the class of algorithms known as ANOVA right ANOVA stands for analysis of variance right but I am not going to get into ANOVA methods. Uh, uh, just the usual case where we are assuming means are different right. So, what if n is small how small is small so class goes to what 4 30 today How small is small? I am just getting starting with this test. We are going to have another hours, hours material. Uh, how small is small? Less than 30. Less than 30, okay. No, 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 no. We are talking about the n here, okay. So, n, n, in, 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 integers, please. Okay. Um, right, n is small. So, so if you, if you think about it, right. It turns out that the central limit theorem works fine only if the sample sizes are reasonably large right. Suppose my sample size is say 5 or my sample size is 10 right then it is no longer clear that I can use the central limit theorem. So, the sampling distribution might not really be Gaussian it turns out that the sampling distribution is slightly different version of Gaussian they are heavier tailed right there is more probability mass in the tails than you would have in the Gaussian. Isn't that a Gaussian just with a larger sigma value? No, no so the Gaussian is actually of a specific form right so e power minus x minus mu by sigma square and things like that. So, this is not so the for the same mean and sigma values this will actually be flatter ok. So, this distribution is called the T distribution or more correctly the students T distribution ok. So, uh, people know why it is called the students T distribution you know why ok. So, there is this uh, person there is a very uh, very uh, very famous statistician whose name now escapes me, but uh, he used to work in a brewery in, in England you know the place where they make whiskey and things like that right. He was one of those people who was in charge of making sure that the, the whiskey that was being produced were of the was of the same quality right there is not too much variance in the in, in the whiskey in the, in the quality of the whiskey that so there is not too much difference in the alcohol levels and things like that right. And so, he came up with all kinds of interesting statistical tests <laughs> for figuring out no, no, it is a serious thing, right? It is a serious application. I mean, in fact, some something which will people will pay you for, right? <laughs> I, I, I mean, for solving assignments in this class, nobody is going to pay you anything, right? Uh, but then, uh, so he was actually doing all of these things and he published serious mathematical articles based on this. But if people knew that somebody from brewery is publishing these articles, they are not going to pay much attention to it. So he wrote under the pseudonym of student, <laughs> right? So, it is called student's t distribution because the author of the paper was student, his name was student, his pseudonym was student, that is why it is called student's t distribution, right. Uh, 
So if people want to know more, more all of this kind of hist uh, very, very interesting uh, tidbits about history of statistics, right? So there is this uh, book called The Lady Tasting Tea. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's actually a very serious book. I mean, I, I recommend it to people if you are interested in knowing more of history of mathematics and stuff like that. It's amazing. So, so apparently there was this English lady who claimed that uh, she could tell the difference if milk was poured into the tea or if tea was poured into the milk. <laughs> right? And uh, of course, she happened to make this uh, statement uh, in, in a gathering of uh, scientists and so on. So there are a couple of statisticians who then ran a one of the very first documented uh, case of what is known as a double blind test. Okay? They did not tell her what was happening, right? they started giving her tea, right? they, they are somewhere, someone behind the screen was sitting there and some cases they were pouring milk into tea, some cases they were pouring tea into milk and giving it to her and then apparently the lady identified this correctly some x percentage of times. Right? Now the question is was she doing it by chance or was she truly able to tell the difference between milk being poured into the tea or tea being poured into the milk? That is a very valid scientific question, right? So they came up with significance tests. Seriously, I am not making this up, go read the book, right? I mean, this is actually, that's, this is history, this is true history, right? right? So instead of the Gaussian, we use the student's tea distribution, right? So the thing is student's tea distribution is, it is not a single distribution, right? It is a family of distribution. I just drew one thing here, but this is not truly just a single t distribution, it is a family of distributions, right? one for each degree of freedom that your setup has. So just like I had the Z statistics, huh, nothing very different, right? It is the same thing as the Z statistics. The T statistics is exactly the same thing as the Z statistics, <coughs> except that, well, here I used the, the population standard deviation by root n. Here I am using the, um, well, sorry, the standards, the, 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 the sample standard deviation by root n, right? Big difference. Right, this is what I was telling you. So you could use the same thing in the Z statistics also. Right, now you don't have to move to T. The reason you want to move to T is if n is small. Right. Now what you do here in the Z test, you compare it with the Z table. Right, in the T test, what are you going to do? T table. That's it. Right. But you have to be careful about which T table, which row in the T table that you use, because there is one row for each number of samples. Right? Suppose you have n samples, you have to look up the row corresponding to n minus 1. Okay? If you have n samples, you have n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Okay? So that is essentially what it is. So one thing about the uh, the t distribution is that it assumes so one thing about the t distribution is that it assumes that the underlying distribution from which the samples are drawn right the population distribution is normal So earlier we were having a sampling distribution where we did not have to worry about the underlying uh, population distribution. Regardless of the underlying distribution, we knew the sampling distribution was normal. But in the t distribution, it assumes that the underlying distribution is normal. But it turns out that in practice, it is extremely robust. 
I mean you can run t tests on arbitrary distributions right and still it gives you reasonable answers provided I mean it is not too skewed or anything right and so most distributions that you would likely see in practice right the t, the, the t test gives you reasonable answers okay so you can use them okay. So moving on I have a Ah, okay, so so very roughly, let's let's look at it this way, right? So um, suppose I give you the mean, okay, and I give you n minus one sample. You can construct the n sample, can't you? For a given mean, I give you n minus one samples. You can construct the n sample. Correct. So that's roughly that. So you have only n minus one free things that you can set in the system. So, but the nth one will be, will be determined. So that's what it means by n minus one degrees. There's a more formal definition of that, uh, but uh, roughly, I mean, intuitively, this is what the thing is. So how many uh, independent factors that you can set in the system? Okay. 